In the beginning, there were thieves. The thieves opened chests, and it was good. 34 years later, everybody opens chests, thieves throw daggers, and to be honest, they're still pretty cool. But how did we get from wimpy thieves with the exclusive ability to open chests to the combat class we have in Fire Emblem Engage? Well, there's been a lot of iteration on this class. Outside of Lords, thieves are the class that have undergone some of the most change since Fire Emblem 1. So let's take a look at the different approaches Fire Emblem has taken to thieves and what effect they had on the games they were in. And then I'll talk about what I think about them overall. We won't be looking in detail at every game in the series in this video, just the thieves that I think are the most noteworthy or represent major shifts in how the class worked. But before we get into it, a big thank you to my geckos on Patreon and a shout out to my skinks, Morg Wolf, Wingman, Upscale Furry Trash, Lonely Voxel, Cosplay Sylveon, Ike Poo, Lucy Sev, Emma, Stars to Art, The Noodle Doodler, Muted Miami, Aaron Geddon, Doopy, and Red Mage Morgan. If you want to support the channel, get shoutouts in videos like this, and get early access to videos, you'll find a link to the Patreon in the video description. As usual, we will be starting at the beginning, in Fire Emblem 1. Most of what I say here will also apply to FE3 Book 1, but there are some differences. We pick up our first thief in FE1 in Chapter 3, a fella named Julian who's fleeing bandits with a cleric named Lena. The game does a good job of impressing on you that Julian is not a fighter. He's not going to fight the bandits to protect Lena, he's going to run away from them. A stark contrast to the introduction of Navarre in the same chapter, who's here to chop up dudes real good. A funny thing about Julian, though, is that while you would expect him to not be much of a fighter, he actually has a strength growth of 70% in FE1. That's tied for the highest strength growth in the game. Though his low base of force strength and lack of promotion mean he won't cap it most of the time, and his less exciting defense stat means even if you train him, it's tricky to put him on the front lines. Plus, his weapon level growth is a stone-cold zero, so however swole Julian gets, he's going to be at a deficit compared to units that can use better weapons. Still, if for some reason you want to use a combat thief, my man does have some anchor arms by the end of the game. Combine a little luck or a strength booster and a devil sword, and it is possible for Julian to kill Medius. Despite Julian's surprisingly high strength growth, doing combat isn't really the role of a thief in FE1. Rather, their strength is in their ability to use thief keys to open doors and chests. This goes double for Rickard, our next thief, who joins later and has worse combat prospects than Julian. It's worth noting, though, that thieves are not strictly necessary for much in FE1. Door keys are purchasable as early as Chapter 5, and our Lord Marth can open chests himself. With that in mind, it may not sound like there's much for thieves to do in FE1 at face value. However, I think thieves serve two important roles. One is on a blind playthrough, nobody knows how many door keys they need to buy, and it's possible you managed your money poorly and you can't afford to buy enough door keys. Being able to deploy a thief to crack a door open is a great fallback option. Second, while Marth can open chests, Marth is a very busy guy in FE1. He's out here visiting villages, seizing thrones, recruiting dudes, and being a combat unit. So if I can deploy a thief to take a job off of Marth's plate, that's usually a good idea. For these reasons, I think players will find themselves getting used out of thieves decently often in FE1. Which brings us to the interesting part about thieves. How does bringing them to a map impact how you play it? It does a few things. First, when you decide you're going to go after a chest with a thief, it encourages you to play a bit faster and maybe split your army between going to the throne and going to the chest. Enemy thieves are going to rush at chests and open them up if you don't get to them quickly, and in FE1 they don't drop the items they stole when they die. So you don't just need to get to chests with your thief, you need to get there faster than the enemy. Second, while your thief is on the way to the chest, they're going to need protecting, so deploying a thief to go get a chest adds sort of a escort quest side objective. In my last video, I talked a bit about how a weaker lord can become an escort quest on Seas maps. Thieves provide a lower stakes version of the same thing, and one that can be used on any map with any objective type. I say lower stakes for two reasons. First, losing a thief doesn't force a reset, and second, a thief's goal is generally just to get you an item rather than seize a throne. So it's not mission critical like an escort quest lord is. The dynamic that thieves have changed a little bit in FE3 where enemies do drop items that they stole from chests when they die, which in some cases means you can get away with not bringing a thief and not bringing a key. In the desert chapter, for example, if you want the skill book in the bottom right chest, instead of sending a thief over, you can send a flyer to kill an enemy thief after he opens the chest, and then you don't have to worry about getting your thief past an unkillable Garneth and his mage reinforcements in order to get that skill book. 
Thieves are still useful in this game, as there aren't always enemy thieves to open chests for you, or they may not always go to the chest you want them to open. Like in Book 1, Chapter 8, where the enemy thief is likely to open the first two chests on the map, but you'll probably kill him before you get to the farthest away chest. So it's still a good idea to bring a thief to grab the Dragon Killer Sword. These games also give you quite a bit of deployment, so it doesn't feel like a big deal to bring a thief along. FE3 Book 2 introduced a new thing for thieves to do as well, which is finding hidden items. Several maps in FE3 Book 2 have items hidden on specific spaces, and when one of your units ends their turn on that space, they have a luck percent chance of picking up the item. Unless they're a thief, and then it's a 100% chance. So functionally, these items are similar to chests in that they are a space you want to guide a thief to in order to grab an item, except you can't see them, enemy thieves aren't going after them, and your other blue units can also pick up the items if you don't mind waiting for them to hit their luck percent chance. Hidden items like this are used pretty often throughout the series, but for most of the rest of the series they are exclusively on desert maps, unlike in FE3 where they can appear on different sorts of maps. FE3 also introduced buyable chest keys, which frankly do invalidate thieves a bit, as long as you saved some cash for them. Fortunately for thieves, the chest keys in Book 1 don't become available in Chapter 12, which is over halfway through the game, but in Book 2 they are available as early as Chapter 9. For the rest of the series, buyable door keys are very common, and chest keys are more inconsistent. I have a little bit of beef with buyable keys. I actually think it's okay that you can buy a key and bring it to a map instead of a thief, but I don't like that the cost to do so is so cheap in most games. In general, it is better to have a key than a thief for any given map, because you can give the key to a unit that is less prone to death than your thief. If keys were very expensive, players would have to make a choice between spending on keys to free up their thief deployment slot, potentially at the cost of not being able to afford other items, or saving their money but having to use and protect a thief to get chests in the game. Instead, usually it's pretty affordable to just buy all the keys you need in games where they are sold. So Arcanea Thieves basically act as a neat optional side objective for you to protect on maps. I like them a little better in FE1 where you don't have the option of buying chest keys or killing enemy thieves to get chest items. In FE3, thieves can often feel superfluous, provided that you remembered to buy keys when you saw them in the store. After FE3, we have FE4, which is the first game where thieves work completely differently. And it's because FE4 is a very different sort of Fire Emblem game than Arcanea. There aren't any chests on the maps or doors for them to open, instead thieves have crappy combat stats, but when they hit an enemy they steal money from them. Even better is that unlike your other units, thieves can distribute money to anyone in your army. This makes them important units for making sure the rest of your team can buy important items and keep their gear repaired since FE4 doesn't have traditional trading, and units have individual wallets they need to use to fund their gear. It's particularly nice to be able to use a thief to pass money to staffers or weak combat units that struggle to clear the arena, since those units can have trouble raising money on their own. This is also the first game where thieves promote. Most players probably won't see this promotion since thieves have a hard time picking up kills and they don't need to to make their money, but with some dedication, you can promote a thief to Thief Fighter, which gives them a pretty sizable stat bonus. If you really want to promote a thief, a time-consuming trick you can do is get your thief married and then have them pass gold back and forth with their spouse. Unlike other units, thieves get experience when they give other units gold, so you can have them pass the loot back and forth until your thief is ready for promotion. Not something I would recommend, it takes forever. But hey, you can do it if you don't want to have to feed your thief kills to get them to promotion. An interesting thing about the way that thieves work in this game is that they need to attack to make their money. So you need to either find safe attacks for them to make, or have them use two ranged weapons or weapons like sleep swords that prevent counterattacks. But of course, then you're using one of those good weapons on a unit that doesn't have great combat, so I think it's an interesting trade-off deciding what weapons you want to give to your thief and how you want to find their attacks so that they can fund the rest of your army. FE4's iteration of the Thief class is really cool, and it's very different out of necessity because the traditional Thief from Arcanea just has no place in FE4. There's no chests for them to open, there's no doors. There is one bridge that do opens in Gen 1, but it is hardly class-defining. So instead of getting rid of the Thief, FE4 provided us with a pretty fresh take on the class that plays nicely with FE4's unique money and inventory system. Next up we have FE5, which brought us perhaps my favorite version of the Thief class. At first glance, thieves in FE5 work pretty similarly to FE1 and 3 thieves. They open chests and doors and have mostly unexciting combat. However, FE5 introduces one command that changes everything for thieves, and that's steal. 
In addition to using lockpicks to open chests and doors, thieves can steal items right out of your enemy's pockets. There's a few restrictions though. First, you have to be faster than the enemy you're stealing from, and second, you can only steal items with a weight lighter than your thief's build. So thief stats actually matter in this game because more speed and more build means more items that you can snag from enemies. There are obvious use cases to this, like stealing things like staves and healing items, but provided your thief has enough build, they can even snatch weapons right out of an enemy's hands. Most weapons are heavy enough that stealing them isn't super realistic, but our first thief can steal lighter tomes like Fire, Thunder, and Wind at base. This actually means thieves have pseudo-combat contributions, as they can easily walk up to a mage, swipe their tome, and leave them helpless against the rest of your army. And what's awesome about it is that they do this at 100% reliability and without ever having to face a counterattack. Doing this even helps you train weaker units, because now that helpless mage is just a walking bag of EXP that you can whack with any unit you want to train. Thieves can also do their job in FE5 without holding a weapon, which allows them to act as capture bait on enemy phase. If you haven't played FE5, capture baiting is when you give a unit no weapon so that enemies will walk up to them and capture them instead of attacking them. This both saves you an attack on enemy phase and lowers their stats so you can kill them more easily on player phase. So there are some situations where a thief can snag a tome on player phase, capture bait on enemy phase, and they have functionally removed one enemy from the map, weakened a second one, and removed an enemy phase attack with minimal risk or investment required. It's awesome. And all of that is on top of stealing being a great way to get new weapons and items, which is especially relevant in the early game of Thracia where you don't have any money. So stealing items either to use or just to sell so you can buy better gear is great for your army. I really like how Thracia differentiates thieves and how you're rewarded a bit if you train one. Your first thief, Lyphus, has more build than your second one, Laura, making him notably better at stealing, while Laura gains the ability to dance later in the game. Then when we get a third thief later, Pern, he has even better build than your first thief. So all three of them have a place in the game, and there are even chapters where you may want to deploy more than one because there's so much stuff a thief can do. And if you want to steal more and better things, you need to do so by training a thief. Every build level on a thief is oh so sweet because that's just more items that they can swipe from your enemies. In addition to stealing giving thieves more to do in Thracia, stealing also provides a new challenge for players to deal with. If there's a strong item you want to steal, sometimes it's on a strong enemy. This often means you need to be careful to create a situation where your thief can steal the item on the same turn you kill the enemy, which can be tough for enemies that have more move than your thief does. Once again, I like the challenge this offers, and it's cool that stealing is ultimately optional. So if there's a really frustrating steal target you're having trouble with, you can always elect to just skip it and miss out on an item, which is not such a terrible consequence. Thieves can also promote an FE5 into Thief Fighter. A fun fact related to this is that Lara can actually promote twice. If you promote Lara before the event that turns her into a dancer, she still turns into a dancer as usual, then you can promote her again later. Her level resets each time, so if you really wanted to, Laura can level up more than any other unit in the game. This is my favorite version of Thieves in the series because they're very powerful, but in a way that feels fun to use and very distinct from your other units. A thief can't dominate all the combat on a map for you, but having situations where they can contribute to defeating enemies and allowing them to steal items to fill your supplies when you need them most is cool. And this makes Thieves feel like a great choice to deploy on lots of maps, even if you have enough door keys to open all the doors that you need to. Thieves remain somewhat similar for the next few games, with some differences in how steel works. In GBA Fire Emblem, you can't steal weapons anymore. In 6, Thieves can always steal items from enemies. In 7 and 8, your Thief needs to have equal or higher speed than the enemy to steal an item. I like the speed requirement, because training a Thief can be a fun challenge, and I enjoy there being some incentive to do so. This is especially relevant in 7, where Matthew needs to gain a few points of speed to steal all of the nice items you would like him to in the early game. The only downside of this system is it does add some randomness into what you steal. Even if you train Matthew, it is possible for him to not hit his speed levels, and then there's some items that you can't get. Personally, I'm okay with this. None of the items are essential. I think it's okay to be able to miss a steel benchmark and lose a promotion item or a stat booster. None of the items Matthew can steal are essential, they're just nice to have, and if you want to increase your chances at not missing those benchmarks, you just level them up more. Another difference in the GBA games is that thieves don't promote in Fire Emblem 6, in 7 they promote to Assassin, a sword locked class with a chance to instantly kill enemies, and in 8 they can promote to either Assassin or Rogue, 
which is just like Thief, except it doesn't have to use lockpick to open locks. Truthfully, these promotions sound more exciting than they are. None of the 7 and 8 thieves are amazing combat units even if you promote them, and promoting into assassin bafflingly makes thieves lose their ability to steal. I still like thieves having the option to promote. This lets players that really like Matthew or Colm or Legault be able to train them so that they can actually fight, and the instant kill effect is fun and exciting when it procs, even if it's not particularly good. In both 7 and 8, the final boss is immune to the assassin's instant kill ability, which I think was a bit of a cowardly move. If a player wants to rig a silencer from Marissa against Fomortis, I think they should be allowed to do that. The no assassinating final bosses rule feels like a bit of a no fun allowed move to me, especially since these bosses aren't even particularly hard, I basically think of Fomortis as a victory lap. FE 9 and 10 are sort of an in-between of GBA and Thracia. You can steal staves and weapons again, but not if they're equipped or locked to a specific user. Plus, in addition to needing to be faster than the enemy you're stealing from, in the Tellius games you need strength higher than the item you're stealing's weight in order to steal it. GBA and Tellius tweak how thieves work, but the core function of a thief is pretty similar across them. The dynamic is that you bring this weaker unit to go snag items and protect them with your stronger units, being careful to create situations where they can safely steal from enemies that are carrying good stealables. The main differentiating factors for how good a thief is in these games is what can they steal, plus the way that non-thief specific mechanics interact with the thief class. Enemies capturing your dudes in Thracia is not a thief specific mechanic, for example, but the fact that a thief can do most of their job while walking around without a weapon makes them a good candidate for capture baiting, and that makes them a little stronger. The prevalence of keys in a game, of course, also impacts how good thieves are. FE8 thieves feel pretty underwhelming, in part because chest keys become available to buy pretty early in the game, whereas in games where chest keys are less available, thieves are more valued for their chest opening abilities. We do need to touch on one specific thief in these games, though, and that's FE10 Soth because he is quite different than all previous thieves. While we have had the occasional thief in the series with serviceable combat, like Astolfo in FE6 or Pern in FE5, FE10 gives us our first and so far only Thief Jagen, and that's Soth. This guy basically feels like the opposite of thieves we've talked about so far, at least during the early game of FE10, you aren't escorting him, he's escorting your other units. Though he can, of course, still do thief things like opening chests, he just feels more focused on being a Jagan, at least during part one. This doesn't represent a major shift in how thieves work, but it is an early sample of what a combat thief might look like. One interesting aspect of having a thief Jagan is that when there are thief responsibilities on a map, you need to decide how to prioritize what Soth is doing. Does he stick around your main squad and do combat, or do you go send him to open a chest or pick up a hidden item? In previous games, this is an easy choice. The thief goes to open the chest. But in FE10, if you send Soth to go open a chest or grab a hidden item, that's taking him away from combat that you will now have to do with a worse unit. Soth isn't really representative of what Thieves looked like in this era of Fire Emblem, but I wanted to touch on him because he's one of the most unique Thieves in the series. After Radiant Dawn, we lose stealing and Thieves go back to being on the simple side for the Arcanea remakes, Fire Emblems 11 and 12. Awakening Thieves work similarly. The only major differences are that in 11 and 12, Thieves can't promote, and nobody can reclass into or out of Thief. Whereas in Awakening, Thieves can reclass or promote like any other class, and other classes can change into Thief, provided it's part of that unit's reclass list. Kellum, for example, can reclass into Thief, which is pretty funny. Fates is up next, and it did make a pretty major change to Thieves, which is that it got rid of them and replaced them with Ninjas and Outlaws. Well, I guess you could argue they replaced Thieves with the Lock Touch skill, which is obtainable on multiple classes. But Ninjas and Outlaws feel like the Thief analogs in the game to me. They come with Lock Touch, and they arrive early in the game. And Ninjas can even fight with knives, just like FE10 Thieves. However, the similarities between Outlaws, Ninjas, and previous games' Thieves largely end there. Outlaws and Ninjas can be great combatants, and while they can open chests, they don't steal. Outside of specifically Soth in Radiant Dawn, this is the first game where your Lock Touch units are honestly more focused on combat. You would use ninjas and outlaws even if they couldn't crack a lock open for you, and you can reclass them out of outlaw and ninja, and they can still crack locks open for you. So, your unit that's opening locks can also be opening the skulls of your enemies pretty easily. 
In previous games, your lock touch units are mostly there to open chests and doors, and any combat they do is sort of a bonus. In Fates, it's the other way around. Your lock touch units are essentially just normal units, and the chests that they open are the bonus. Echoes doesn't have thieves, but the class does return in three houses, and with it the Steal command. In this case, it is a class mastery skill for the Thief class, and allows you to steal non-weapon items from units with lower speed than your unit. So basically the GBA method, except you need to master a class to access the steal skill. Unlike some previous iterations of Thieves, Thieves in three houses don't have to have bad combat, though obviously they would have better combat in another class. I find steel as a class mastery skill to be an interesting design choice. It makes it so that if you want to be able to steal items, you need to commit to the thief class at least for a little bit. And importantly, you can't be working towards another class's mastery skill while you build up to the thief one. So if you want one of your units to get steel, they're gonna have to detour from whatever classes you wanted them to master for the rest of their build and focus on mastering thief instead. I like this as a choice for the player. Do you wanna just rush through the most important classes for a unit's combat? or will you detour through Thief and hope to make up the difference through stolen items? Other than that, Thieves in Three Houses don't work too differently than previous Thieves. Though Three Houses doesn't feel like a big Thief game, there aren't a ton of chests and doors, and there are buyable keys that you can use. But I like how they did the Steel Command. And that's going to bring us to our final Thief in Engage. I'm going to spend a lot of time on this one, since it's a game I've played a lot recently, and Engage's Thief is pretty unusual. In many ways, Engage's Thief feels more similar to Fates' Ninja than Three Houses' Thief, which makes sense since Three Houses was made by a different company. In fact, Engage's Thief is almost entirely unrecognizable compared to Thieves in the earlier games, so let's take a look at how they work in Engage. Like Fates Ninjas, Engage Thieves are primarily 1-2 to two ranged fighters using daggers, which debuff enemies when they hit them. The debuff is quite different, though. In Fates, getting hit with a throwing weapon inflicted a stat penalty, and that penalty differed depending on which throwing weapon was used. In Engage, all daggers apply poison, a stacking debuff that makes an enemy take one extra damage per stack of poison every time they get hit. In theory, this is pretty cool. I think it's fun in many games to do massive debuff stacks and watch an enemy die to them, but in Engage, I think this was less of a good fit. It's not that hard to one round in Engage, and it's pretty uncommon that you can't take out an enemy with two of yours. With that in mind, it's difficult for poison to stack up before an enemy dies, and often the poison just isn't necessary to kill the enemy. Its best use cases is against bosses who sport multiple health bars and are likely to be attacked three or four times. I do like how the debuff interacts with refresh effects like Seedol or Byleth Dance. Using those tools allows you to apply multiple stacks of poison in a single turn, which is fun even if I don't think it's the best way to kill enemies. Thieves also have the relatively uncommon covert typing on their class, which has some pretty strong synergy with emblem rings, giving you access to effects like a 20 range Astra Storm with Lin, a Speed Rally with Byleth, or if you want your thief to be a little more self-sufficient, they can set up Fog with Corrin to really pump their dodge rate up, which is one of the more thiefy feeling things that thieves do in Engage. In a change I found surprising, Thieves don't promote an Engage. In fact, they are a bit of a special case. Nothing promotes into Thief, and Thieves can only class change into promoted classes once they hit level 21. Similarly, other units can't class change into Thief until they promote. The effect of this choice is that Engage can give you an early Thief like Yunaka with high class bases, and this allows her to feel strong and be unique for a while since your other scrubs can't reclass into Thief yet. However, while Thief's reclassing situation makes Yunaka feel unique when she joins, it also makes Thief a bit of an awkward class. Other units can be promoted and reclassing into whatever classes suit them for a given map while Thieves are stuck grinding their way to level 21 before they can make a change. Making Thieves work this way also denies units like Yunaka a cool promotion unit that all of your other early growth units get. And this is unfortunate because I think a trickster promotion would have worked great in Engage. Staves are powerful and fun to use in Engage, and I think the flavor of the class would fit a character like Yunaka really nicely. Speaking of promoted classes, I should note that Thieves aren't the only knife-using class. Promoted units also have Wolf Knight as an option, but it makes sense to me that Thief doesn't promote into that because the thematic fit of going from Thief into Wolf Knight is not quite right. But their existence does mean that Thieves do not have a monopoly on dagger access through the mid-game and later. At that point, their identity becomes more about the mix of covert typing and dagger access, which makes them uniquely capable of doing something like a funny dodge tanking crit build. You may have noticed I didn't mention thief utility anywhere in this, and that's because there really isn't any in Engage. 
because any unit can open a chest, so you don't need to bring a thief and escort them to a chest to open it. I see why they went the direction they did with Thieves in Engage. Engage doesn't feel like a game that's really focused on super strong side objectives, so adding a thief escort mission to a bunch of maps wouldn't really make a ton of sense. Most maps don't have chests, and in those that do, the contents of the chests are often pretty meh. Engage also feels like a game where they want all of your units to feel powerful and capable, and your army to be customizable. At least once you're past the point in the early game where you have rings and seals and skill inherits. So, if a thief is going to be included at all in this game, it makes sense to make them more like a normal unit than previous iterations of the class. And it wouldn't make sense to make you dedicate one of your limited deployment slots in Engage to a thief, in a game that broadly encourages heavy customization of your squad as a lever of expression for the player. I think the Engage Thief is a fine template for what a thief could look like if the series continues to issue the classic unique thief utility, but unless enemies are going to regularly take a bunch of rounds of combat to kill, Poison is a pretty meh mechanic. I prefer the stat debuffs from Fates, which felt more impactful to me. Additionally, I think they should be able to promote we even have two classic options in Assassin and Trickster. Heck, you could even bring back Whisper from Radiant Dawn. That class was badass as hell, I would be happy to see it again. Probably won't shock anyone that's watched a lot of these videos to hear that I kinda like having the occasional escort quest and unit to protect though, so I do prefer the older approach to Thieves. FE5 Thieves are my favorite in the series. So I hope if FE wants Thieves to be more unique, which is an ambition I encourage, they do it by adding back features like stealing, even if lock touch remains a universal mechanic. But if steal has to be gone, then debuffing seems like as fine an identity as any for thieves. The debuffs just need to feel useful, and enemies need to not be easy to kill without the debuffs. Thanks for hanging out until the end of the video. If you have a favorite version of the thief class, I would love to hear about it in the comments. If you want to chat about Fire Emblem more, you can hop into the community discord in the video description. If you liked the video, consider leaving a like or subscribe so that you don't miss the next one. Either way, have yourself a lovely week.